Ah, yes. The ultimate love story has finally arrived, where we will now see the true love between a woman and an extra from SpongeBob SquarePants. Hey guys, this is Matt Brunet, also known as Animat, and welcome to a very special review that you can only find exclusively on Filmbook. And this time, I will be looking into Guillermo del Toro's latest feature, The Shape of Water, which is also his last movie before he would go onto his year-long break. So, he could just go relax and have an interview with George Miller and Michael Mann. But anyways, before I get into my thoughts and get into my review of this movie, allow me to go and summarize the best I can what this movie is all about. So the story of the film is about a woman named Elijah who is more of a follower than a leader, since her friends would mostly use her as just a pair of ears that they could talk about their problems or the current situation that they're in, and it really doesn't help either that she is a mute, so she would have a lot of difficulties to truly express herself or to have others listen to her than for her to listen to others. But then everything would change at her workplace when there's this mysterious creature that came in who is half man, half fish. It's basically a fish monster, but for the case of this review, I'm going to call him Doug because the dude is actually played by Doug Jones. So inside, Elijah would encounter Doug and they would start to grow a little bit of a bond. And for once, Doug actually looks at Elijah as an actual person. Elijah actually found someone who is willing to listen to her. But throughout the rest of the movie, as her bond with Doug would grow, uh, so do the villains need to actually go and get that fish monster, to go and get Doug, basically. So, it's pretty much simultaneously, you see a little bit of romance, but there is a little bit of uh, action in there as well. Or, not necessarily action, but there is a bit of an intensity in there where you see that there are some government officials that are going after Doug. So, um, not only does Elijah grow to love Doug, but also she has to go and save Doug. Now, before going in, I always thought that this movie would be a little bit like a Beauty and the Beast type of story, where the main aspect of it would be the love between Elijah and Doug. Well, technically, it is kind of like that. It's more prominent throughout the second half of the film, but what it mainly is, is actually about listening. That's pretty much what this movie is. The Beauty and the Beast aspect is more of a theme. Love is just one of the themes of this movie, but what it's about, it's actually to listen. And it really does help as well over the fact that Elijah is a mute to really express this message about listening, to really come out of their shell to go and express their want and their need in order to protect and to save and to love something. And you can see that throughout the entire movie where this theme of listening uh, is very prominent, especially the factor that this is set during the Cold War. Like, this is during the 1950s and the 1960s where America has this massive paranoia over the Russians and uh, like co communism is the enemy and all that kind of stuff. So you do see how ignorance, bigotry, and discrimination can also cloud the mind and it, it, it makes people incapable to listen to others. And that's one of the messages that you see right over there. And you see uh, a massive development with it where Elijah grows from being a follower to an actual leader, where she would have to one day just put her foot on the ground and have her friends listen to her instead of her listening to her friends in order to go and protect and save Doug from 
potentially being dead. And I think that really is the true beauty of this movie, is that it does have a powerful message of standing up and speaking out. And I could definitely see how, for many people, that could actually be a component that would really touch them on a personal level. And even for someone myself, um, someone who's not necessarily that outgoing, or someone who doesn't necessarily interact with a lot of people like not a, a major social bug uh like myself you know it does resonate with that a little bit that it is important to go and come out of your shell and to really express yourself but also as a movie in itself it is very well crafted you will hear a lot of people just praising about how this movie is built in general and it definitely is true uh the cinematography is very well done and that's definitely a great component from guillermo del toro that i have noticed throughout the film is that you see how the shots are masterfully crafted in this but also the production design is actually beautiful this is not an expensive film uh, especially the factor that it is a little bit more on the fantasy side, especially when you bring in Doug into this, but it actually has a relatively small budget. This actually cost around $20 million. That's it. And I definitely feel that this is the kind of film that really does work best within its limitations. It knows that it doesn't have a lot to work with, but it takes the materials that it has and use it to its full potential. And that's what you pretty much see throughout this movie. So it definitely looks gorgeous as well. And on top of that, I will say that the acting is also brilliant as well. Of course, Sally Hawkins as Elijah is just fantastic. This really is next level acting where she would have to express herself with her body in order to communicate with others. Of course, she would use sign language, but it's mostly through body acting that she would have to go and express herself as Elijah, and that really is uh, such a great performance right there. But there are also others that I truly did enjoy as well, especially with Octavia Spencer as Zelda, and also Richard Jenkins as Giles. Like, they were also great, and uh, often they can bring out some comedic performances, some good funny moments, but they really do bring up a lot of depth onto their character. And just the ways that they interact with Elijah and how they would grow as well from just speaking out their problems to actually taking a moment to sit and listen to Elijah about her want and about her needs. And you could definitely see in there how these characters can truly evolve. So one of the great components about the writing is how they would develop their characters, how they fully feel human, and how they would experience this as well. And how they actually do have a little bit of Elijah as well, where sometimes they don't feel like they're being listened to and that's why uh, they're good friends with Elijah because these are people that don't necessarily have someone to talk to to hear about their problems. With the case of uh, Zelda, Octavia Spencer's character, uh, she's an African American woman whom her husband is just uh, a little bit lazy and kind of deadbeat while um, Giles, played by uh, Richard Jenkins, he's more closeted and he's not necessarily the best at his job. Like, he's trying to break into his career, but it's not working as well. And part of it is because he doesn't feel like there are people that truly do listen to him or listen to his creativity or his ideas, which is why they are friends of Elijah because she is that person who is willing to listen to them and at one point they would actually know how it feels to be Elijah and then treat her a lot more respectfully. 
And then there is one other character that I just cannot help but feel like it reminds me entirely of another character from another movie, which in this case is Colonel Richard Strickland played by Michael Shannon. And honestly, I can't help but feel like he really does have a lot of strong parallels to Kent Mansley from The Iron Giant where this guy is the villain and his goal is to make sure that he just wants to get rid of the paranormal creature of the movie, which in this case is the fish monster Doug. And he's also a symbolism of American arrogance during the 1950s and the 1960s, like throughout the Cold War, where they're entirely filled with paranoia about the Russians and communism and losing the war and all that stuff. And he pretty much fills his mind with this egotistical tone thinking that he is the best, he is number one purely because he is American. So with that said, I'm not saying he's a bad character. He's definitely well executed written wise and also with Michael Shannon's performance, but I can't help but feel like there are some strong parallels with the Iron Giant there with his character and with Kent Mansley. In fact, in a way, this does also have some parallels with the Iron Giant in itself, where this is the type of story that uh, the main character would meet this paranormal creature. The focus is on the bonding of them, while at the same time there's this evil government that's trying to go uh, and try to get the paranormal creature, and the mission is to try to go and save this creature. So it has a little bit of that plot that is similar to films like E.T. and The Iron Giant, but this one is still very well executed. It does hit the right notes story-wise, and also a bit of the emotion as well, where you definitely do feel the connection and the bond between Elijah and Doug. So it definitely does work on that account. That and also, I just want to point out that you can definitely see a lot of the Guillermo del Toro-isms onto the movie. I have already mentioned about how this film is crafted, but at the same time, you also do see some of the tributes to classic cinema right over there. Of course, a lot of people can draw some strong parallels to Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, but there are also some scenes as well, rather they be subtle or rather they be plainly obvious, that the romance is a tribute to many of those classic Hollywood films. In fact, there is actually this one fantasy scene where Elijah imagines herself that she has a voice and now it becomes like this classic golden age of Hollywood style musical number where she would dance with the fish monster. Yeah, there is actually that scene. It's funny, it's crazy, but you know, it's also sweet and heartwarming at the same time because you definitely do feel for these two characters and you can truly see how much that Eliza really is in love with uh, the fish monster. So, and that and also, there is one major parallel that I can do with this film, and that is actually regarding Doug, the fish monster. You can definitely see how it is made by Guillermo del Toro, because while some would think about Creature from the Black Lagoon, he also draws some strong parallels between Abe from Hellboy. And even in there, like, it is kind of funny to think that it is kind of a coincidence, where you actually think about this one scene, I think it was in the second film, where Abe does fall in love and there is a little bit of a side plot that he wants to impress the girl that he is in love with. And then you see this movie right over here, where it does revolve around uh, this romance with a fish monster. So overall, I would say that this is definitely a fantastic film and if I would give this a rating, it would have to be a 9 out of 10. It's a very well-crafted film, both in the filmmaking with what the crew has done and also with what the cast has done. The acting is just spectacular with many breakthrough and standout performances. And on top of that, I really do love the message and the theme about listening. 
And I think right over there, I think this is definitely going to be a must watch for introverted people. This would probably be something to encourage them to go and be more outspoken about their wants, their needs, their dreams. If they truly do care about something, now would actually be the time to actually stand up and not be the follower anymore, but be more the leader. And I think that truly is the beauty of this film. And yeah, this would definitely be up there as one of Guillermo del Toro's best, where this is less about the action of the film because lately he has done a lot of those like when you think about Guillermo del Toro he is pretty synonymous with a lot of those fantasy action films rather if you would think about stuff like uh, Blade or the Hellboy films or Pacific Rim or I would even throw in uh, the Netflix series Troll Hunters but this one you could definitely feel like this is more in the veins of Pan's Labyrinth where Guillermo del Toro is focused on telling a story. This is about making a movie, and he did exactly that. And honestly, uh, it definitely is fantastic, and I highly recommend it because this is definitely be this this will definitely be one of those movies that you're going to be hearing a lot during award season. Like this is going to be one of those names that will be popping up quite frequently, especially in the nomination categories. So definitely go and check out The Shape of Water. And that is pretty much it with this review of The Shape of Water. So I just want to start things off by giving a huge thanks to Filmbook for giving me this opportunity to go and uh, check out The Shape of Water. And uh, I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check them out on their website, film-book.com. Uh, if you want to go and get the latest news about movies, television, and anything in the entertainment industry, just go and check it, check them out right there. Plus the fact that I do have some other stuff in there as well that's exclusively on Filmbook, including the animation podcast where every week I would give out the latest news about what's going on in animation. And if you guys actually enjoyed me throughout this review, then you can actually go and check out my YouTube channel at Electric Dragon 505 and I also got some social media places that you can find me as well including Facebook, Twitter, and I even have a Patreon. So definitely go and check me out and definitely check out Filmbook. And that's pretty much going to be it with this review so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, see you later dudes!